As someone who was taking the subway every day to work, I have strong opinions on possible improvements. So when I saw Overcrowd, a commute em up, I instantly started following it in early access. I realize now the error of my arrogant ways, and building a subway station is a lot more challenging than I thought. The riders are never happy, and all they do is complain how overcrowded it is. Still, I'm having a lot of fun with Overcrowd, trying to manage rodents and keeping the passengers pleased. Let's take a ride and talk about station layouts, the user interface, and juggling a million tasks. My favorite part of Overcrowd is how the game builds in intensity as the number of tasks you manage grows. It becomes all-consuming trying to keep the trains moving and making sure the station isn't overheating. While Overcrowd is a game about building a subway station, it has a lot more. There's a system for everything. Pushing commuters through the station is important to reduce the overcrowding because they will wander wherever you let them. So you should block off some areas as employee only and make sure to mark stairs and turnstiles with the correct direction passengers can go. I find great pleasure in making sure there are stairs for exiting only. I wish the New York subway had this feature. Another system is garbage collection. While some writers are good about throwing stuff away, an employee needs to empty those trash cans. Another employee needs to make sure the generators are filled with gas, but that's going to fill the station with heat. Oh, don't forget about placing shops and benches, so all the riders' needs are met or they will complain. So yeah, the game can get a little crazy. Even if you're failing in one area, you can be doing great in another to overcome it. When in doubt, add some plants. Trust me. Building a new station begins the same every time. First, you choose which entrance and track you want to use and connect them with flooring. Be careful which you select because they can have different amounts of ridership. If you choose heavy traffic, it could flood your station with passengers. Then you add a couple of turnstiles, lights, and a ticket machine. Now you have a station! It sounds so easy when I say it out loud, but it's much more difficult when the station has multiple floors. The game can go up to four levels deep, which is amazing, but makes the game more like a puzzle. Placing employees, shops, and utility rooms is a huge deal as the station grows. What I will say is the riders are never satisfied. They expect low ticket prices along with tons of amenities that don't fit in my station. I mean, where do they think they are? Japan? Eventually your employees are healing sick passengers and you might confuse Overcrowd with Two Point Hospital. It's an impressive level of service I don't really want to offer. Although the passenger's happiness is directly tied to your success because once it drops to zero, you fail. I struggle with keeping enough money around. I'm too excited to expand the station to new entrances and build new rail lines. Building ATMs and newspaper stands costs money, but floor space is the real killer. I believe it's true in real life as well. Being strategic about spending is the key to success and knowing when to expand the station. The game is generous and allows you to sell back the flooring at the same price you purchased it. The area of the station takes up a lot more space than expected because not all of it is dedicated to passengers. You also need areas to build utilities, store tools, and allow employees to take breaks. Even worse when you realize the levels are randomly generated with areas you cannot build into. It's best to plan a little before building because sometimes you'll get stuck and not be able to place a set of stairs where you want. It happened to me because the rail lines were too close together and reconfiguring your station is a nightmare. Uh, oh, not, not because it's difficult, but because you're going to run out of money and there's a penalty for moving anything around during the day. So not only will you take a hit in the pocket, but also rider happiness. Luckily, you will not have to do all the jobs yourself. You may hire employees to help out around the station. And they're pretty good, but you need to give them the right tools for the job. Also, if you want more than one employee to work on something, you'll need two tools. The employees level up too, and you get to choose where to spend their upgrades. For example, adding more perception will allow them to work in a larger area, but you might not want them to be the only person cleaning up litter if the station is too big. Also, the more they perform a task, the better they get at it. 
Having the correct amount of employees placed around your station is a balancing act of tools and their hourly rate. Now you can micromanage them if you want and the pause menu gives you a detailed view of the possibilities. It's especially good when you have to end their break early to fix a train. Anyway, there are a couple of game modes to play. Station Sandbox, Commute of the Day, and Network Sandbox. In the Station Sandbox, you play a single station with whatever rules you come up with. The game gives you a ton of options to set the win-lose conditions, change the map, and the commuter's behavior. I'm impressed with how many settings there are. The Commute of the Day mode pushes you to build a five-track station in a daily that's designed to be a challenge. Always nice to see. However, the main mode is Network Sandbox, where you build a network of stations on a randomly generated map. Starting out, you only have access to one train line and everything is limited. Then as you move passengers, you gain bonds you can spend on unlocking upgrades. The unlocks persist between stations and stations are broken up into difficulty zones. I like the system and it's very clear when a level is going to be more difficult. Also from the station select, you can see what the biggest problems are. The game isn't secretive about much, so it's down to skill. You also get to keep employees between levels and I couldn't do it without them. I pay them far too little for how important they are, but I'm running a subway station here. The levels are very goal oriented and have a to-do list with financial incentives for crossing them off. I enjoyed the game slowly giving me improvements instead of dumping everything on me at once. However, the game suggests going back and replaying levels, but doing so is tricky. The writers are going to want all the new stuff you've unlocked, but if you're like me, you left the station with very little money. It's a little weird the game recommends going back. I would rather start a new network sandbox game or go for the commute of the day. You should keep in mind getting five stars is not required for advancing the game, and I skated by a few levels on one star. It's mainly because getting all the stars requires you to do the bonus goals and I couldn't do it without more unlocks, but it's also because of my failings to run the station, so I appreciate not locking the levels behind stars. Before wrapping this review up, I want to mention the user interface, employee management, and building tools. Everything is simple enough to pick up right away. Four different elevation levels could have been tricky, but the game has buttons to highlight each level individually. It makes it so easy to find the exact square you're looking for. The other views are great too, using thermal imaging to see heat levels or showing reputation loss from litter, spillages, dirt, and fumes. Managing employees stands out though because it's so straightforward assigning them jobs. You can even choose which ones are more important. Really well done and the only thing I do struggle with is finding items I want to build. However, it's my fault since they're grouped by room. Overall, Overcrowd is hectic and challenging, exactly what I expect in the genre. I like the old computer aesthetic and cute graphics. Kind of reminds me of the original SimCity. Overcrowd is an early access success and I recommend it. It feels completely different from other games and instead of managing trains, the focus is on managing passengers and employees. I'm cooking up some hot videos you gotta see. So come along as I find some of the best indie games to play. Thanks for watching.